Hi everyone, my name is Roman Trieb and I'm a doctoral student at ETH Zurich. In the next few minutes I'm going to present our work FlockLab 2 Multimodal Testing and Validation for the Wireless Internet of Things. Today the development of sensor node software on the desk does no longer mainly rely on serial output and does not require huge and expensive measurement devices to get logic and power traces. State-of-the-art tools are commonly used for debugging software on a single device. Nowadays, the development of sensor node software requires power tracing with high dynamic range. It should support sub-microampere low power sleep currents of modern microcontrollers as well as high power transmit currents of today's radios. Furthermore, a testbed should support on-chip debugging hardware, which for example allows to set breakpoints and reading from the internal memory. In order to develop timing-critical wireless networking protocols, all measured data needs to be globally time-synchronized with sub-microsecond accuracy. Time synchronization should work testbed-wide even for long distances between observers. This is necessary in the view of emerging long-range radios. Different existing testbeds such as DCube or IoT Lab fulfill a subset of the requirements. However, to the best of our knowledge, none of the existing testbeds implements all of the requirements combined. In our work, we present FlockLab 2, a second generation testbed for wireless sensor networks and wireless IoT devices. The design combines and integrates new tools and components, but at the same time supports services that have proven successful in the past. We equip every testbed observer with a debug probe for state-of-the-art native hardware debugging, which makes use of debug infrastructure built in into modern microcontrollers. Accurate high dynamic range power measurements can be realized by portable and affordable devices. This enables us to integrate high quality power measurements on each observer node. We further integrate two time synchronization technologies which support the synchronization of devices at physical locations far away from each other. They allow for high accuracy and do not impact the wireless radio communication of the devices under test. In addition, we integrate the single board computer with more performance reserves. This slide shows the FlockLab 2 observer architecture. Each observer is connected to the central testbed server via Ethernet. An observer has four target slots. This allows to install multiple sensor node platforms at the same testbed node location with only little overhead. Each target slot delivers up to 500 mA and features connections for serial communication, GPIO lines and on-chip debugging. On each observer, there is a dedicated Sager J-Link debug probe, which supports native hardware-assisted debugging and is connected to the target via the serial wire debug protocol. Precise time synchronization of each observer is achieved by a Global Navigation Satellite System receiver, abbreviated GNSS receiver. GNSS requires satellite reception, which is not always available. Therefore, our design also supports the Precision Time Protocol, short PTP, over Ethernet. PTP is a more precise alternative of the well-known NTP time synchronization protocol. The architecture includes the Biglebone Green single board computer, which runs a Linux operating system. In addition, the single board computer features two programmable real-time units, abbreviated PRUs. In our design, we use them to implement timing-critical tasks. One PRU is used to periodically collect voltage and current measurements from the power measurement subsystem. The second PRU is used to implement the logic tracing of the GPIO pins of the target. The core site debug and trace modules inside modern ARM-based microcontrollers together with the Sager Chaling debug probe allow to stop the program execution by manual interaction, breakpoints or watchpoints. Furthermore, the debug and trace support allows to read from the memory of the sensor node under test. Most modern development software and IDEs can directly connect to the debug probes on FlockLab 2 via the internet. As with the previous FlockLab testbed, all other tracing services run without user interaction. On each observer, the power measurement, the serial log and the logic tracing are collected locally and only at the end of the test the collected traces are transferred to the testbed server. The testbed needs to trace low power sleep currents below 1 microampere as well as high power consumption of modern long-range radios in transmit mode which can easily use hundreds of milliamperes. The integrated power measurement system is based on the rocket logger, a portable device which allows high accuracy and high dynamic current and voltage measurements. 
In order to cover the large range from nanoamperes to hundreds of milliamperes, the current measurement circuit uses two ranges. The low current range is based on a feedback ammeter and covers 0 to 2 milliamperes, whereas the high current range uses a shunt ammeter and covers the range between 2 and 500 milliamperes. The range is automatically switched based on the current consumption. The power measurement service supports sampling rates up to 64 kHz and the maximum accuracy for current measurements is 60 nanoamperes. For the integration into FlockLab 2, we took special care to ensure the electric isolation between the target and the observer. Tracing a full resolution on all observers can quickly generate a huge amount of data. Therefore, FlockLab 2 supports the logging of power measurements in a binary format. Timing critical networking protocols, like for example GLOSSY, require that the collected traces from all observers are aligned on a common time axis with sub-microsecond accuracy. We achieve this by using the precisely synchronized pulse per second signal from GNSS or PTP. For the most timing critical service, the logic tracing, these reference PPS time pulses are locked along with the GPIO events using the programmable real-time unit. The actual time alignment is performed during post-processing of the collected data. The presented design supports a maximum event rate of 10 MHz in case of a burst of events and 900 kHz in case of continuous tracing. The time deviation between any two observers when synchronized with GNSS has been measured to be below 0.25 microseconds. The publicly available instance of FlockLab 2 at ETH Zurich currently supports four different sensor node platforms. It supports the well-known but a bit outdated Telos B sensor node and at the same time it supports two modern nodes. The DPP2 LoRa node, which is based on an STM32 L4 microcontroller with a LoRa capable radio for long-range communication and the NRF dongle, which supports Bluetooth low energy. The generic target interface between the observer and the targets allows to add new sensor nodes with only little effort. The publicly available testbed currently consists of 12 indoor nodes which are located in an office building and 3 outdoor nodes which are installed on rooftops. With this, the network topology covers link distances from 4 meters up to 2 kilometers and enables the testing of networking protocols involving long-range communication. To use the testbed, the user first prepares an XML file containing the test configuration and the binary image of the sensor node software. In a second step, the XML file is uploaded to FlockLab2 via the web interface or the API. In a third step, the test is then executed at the requested time. The autonomous execution facilitates the repeatability. However, the user has the possibility to interact with the nodes during test execution either by remotely connecting to the debug probes or via the serial port. In the last step, the user can download all collected test measurements in a single archive file and analyze or visualize the results on the personal machine. For visualization of FlockLab2 measurements and for API interactions, we provide a Python-based software library. In the following two slides, I will briefly show how FlockLab2 and its services can be used. In the first example, we see the tracing of a synchronous transmission protocol, which is similar to Glossy. The upper part shows the visualization of the logic tracing. The orange bars indicate radioactivity and the black smaller bars indicate interrupts from the radio. With a breakpoint, node 9 is halted at the requested point in the protocol, namely at the radio interrupt of the first transmission after reception of a packet. The debug and trace service allows to inspect the internal state of the node at that time instance. An example of this is shown in the lower part of the figure. For example, it shows the internal timestamp for scheduling the following retransmission. In the second example, we use the power measurement service to lock the current consumption when retransmitting a message three times. The graph actually shows two traces. For the first one, the node uses a fixed length time window for the radio activities. In the second one, the radio is put into low power sleep mode right after sending the last message. Accurate power measurements allow to verify the correct low power behavior on all nodes. In addition, they allow to compare different variants of the software. It might seem easy to calculate and simulate this for a single node. However, for more complex networking protocols with many node interactions, this becomes a complex task. In this case, a testbed-wide power measurement service can be very helpful. 
In conclusion, the architecture of FlockLab 2 combines native hardware debug and trace support with high accuracy and high dynamic power measurements and with accurate testbed wide time synchronization based on GNSS and PTP. In the future, we plan to work out additional methods which make use of the network-wide distributed debugging. In addition, we plan to extend the FlockLab 2 instance at ETH Zurich to around 30 nodes. As previously mentioned, the testbed instance at ETH Zurich is publicly available and can be accessed via our website. On the same website, we publish the software for server and observer, as well as the hardware design files for the testbed as open source. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention.